coming home tonight, and I, I just told her, I was like, I don't know, I mean, I have a show, I guess I'm gonna come around for that, why? And she was like, well, there's an active shooter in our neighborhood, so I think you should just stay away from the house for a while. Um, so, you know, if anybody wants to hang out after this, I got some time to get away while my parents are out home fucking. <laughs> that they're getting more action than I've gotten lately. <laughs> and it's not that I haven't tried. Like, last month for my birthday, I did exactly what our parents taught us not to do while growing up, and I drove excessive hours to a foreign place to stay with a complete stranger because I went to Mississippi to stay a week with a guy that I met on Tinder, and we were talking for a couple months, and I was like, oh, man, I got this good guy, good guy. And good guys, like, they're, it's kind of like how you fry your tater tots. You know, you just kind of, like, jump on it while you have a chance, <laughs> right? So I, I got prepared. I was very excited. And, like, I shaved, you know, fellas? You feel me? Right? You're going on a date. You got you to gotta shave, or, you know? But you don't just stop with your face. You got to get everything, right? So you get your chest hair, get your, get your hat trail, landing strip. <laughs> If you really want to impress them, you'll trim up your tush bush. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if you're not shaving your butthole, you're missing out. <laughs> there, there is the level of satisfaction of going to the bathroom with no obstacles or snagging, like it's up there, with, with getting a piece of three day old meat dislodged from between your teeth. It's nice. <laughs> like, like, you know, at the bank, those tubes where you stick the bottle in and it shoots up? Imagine that in reverse. <laughs> it's, it's so... <laughs> so, I, I went full-on shampoo for this dude. And, it, <laughs> and I get there, and then nothing even happened. Y'all seem a little confused. We didn't fuck. <laughs> Did that, is that what y'all wanted to hear? <laughs> oh, I'm just sad. <laughs> you know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You know, because for all I know, he could have just been one of those crazy tenure guys that you hear the horror stories about, where like at the end of the night they'll take their date home and eat them or something. You know, <laughs> like on the first night I was there, we're laying in bed watching TV, and he scooted up real close to me, put his head real close to mine, and then just softly whispered in my ear, "Stab, stab." Right, something stabbed me in the back, and my fire flight kicked in, so I like rolled over to see what was going on, and he's just like staring in the eyes with his dick in his hands. You know, and like I said, nothing happened, so I'm still confused as to what he was trying to like accomplish with this gesture, and the only logical thing I can think of is that maybe over there on East of the Mississippi, down in the deep south, that there is how they say hello. You know? <laughs> they just screw their genitalia at you, like, oh, hi! 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 And that was just the first little inkling of me realizing how crazy this dude was. Like, it wasn't confirmed for me until I saw how he treated his dog. Because he treated her literally like it was his child. You know, and that's fine, people do that, but he would refer to her as his precious baby girl. <laughs> and he would always be giving her kisses on the mouth. <laughs> and he would take her literally everywhere with him. And not on a leash, not in a little cute little doggy stroller, he would literally throw her over his shoulder like a continental soldier and just walk out the house. <laughs> this dude was nuts. But, I mean, honestly though, in that moment, like, I was kind of ready to die. Like, I, I was ready for it. You know, it wasn't the ideal situation I knew that, being in Mississippi with a crazy dude. But I was like, it could be worse, Josh. You could be in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> and so overall, my time in Mississippi didn't end the way that I wanted it to, you know? I still had a good time. It's still a learning experience. So I just gotta look on the bright side of everything and just stay as positive as his HIV status. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the dog, the dog thing, you know, like it's 
maybe I ran, you know, because like maybe it's okay to show your kids love every now and then, right? Dad? <laughs> <laughs> Dad has never had a very good relationship. Like, he's never given me any sort of fatherly gesture to show that he really loves me. Uh, he did give me diabetes, I inherited that from him. <laughs> so I guess you could say, like, when I was a kid, he gave me some sugar, but it wasn't just a kind of um, And now he just, he treats me weird because he feels guilty that it's his fault that I have diabetes, which it is. But, <laughs> Now he just like pities me and treats me like a sick child, and I hate that. Because diabetics, I don't think we should be pitied. I think we should be revered for the superhumans that we are. Because everything we do in our daily life is to defy death. Yeah. yeah. Like you see these people on the news, like risking their lives for the sake of humanity, getting this heroic status, and that's great. They deserve like every bit of that. But I have to put my life on line if I want to get a cookie. <laughs> Where's my metal bar? You know? I feel like that deserves some sort of merit, right? I'm not asking for too much. I don't expect too much. I'm just like, I think diabetics deserve like a sitcom on ABC. It'd be about three dudes who all have diabetes, all living together. It'll probably be called Diabuddies. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll essentially be like that 70s show, except instead of everybody smoking weed in the basement, those will be shooting up insulin in the corner. <laughs> And, you know, the characters don't even have to change, right? Like, I, I'm Eric Foreman. <laughs> my, my dad is literally Red Foreman. Like, you know that he cares, but he has a really weird way of showing it. Like, the other day there was a wasp nest on the side of our house. So my dad saw this as an uh, opportunity for a bonding moment. So he dragged me outside in the middle of the day to try to show me this like, trick that I learned when he was a kid, where if you go really slow, you can sneak up on the wasps because they won't see you as a threat, and you can, you can just squish them in your hand. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's like a T-Rex, you know, like a, just no sudden movements. That makes sense, yeah, cool, cool. So I put on the gloves and everything, I went for it, and I got stung right here where the glove ended. <laughs> yeah. Kind of unfortunate. Like it, it just wasn't a good place because it's very sensitive and full of nerves. And then everyone said, "I've never been stung." And people always said, "Like, oh, that's like that hurts so bad. Like that must suck." Honestly, I didn't think it was that bad. But considering when you're taking it up the ass all the time, you kind of build a high pain tolerance. <laughs> I was just mad at myself. Honestly, like I was pissed at myself that I like listened to my dad and believed. <laughs> you know, like, I was like, what kind of logic is this? And it was in that moment that I realized I should not have trusted my father. Because, you know, the only thing that man has ever really taught me was how to not have a gag reflex. <laughs> <laughs> because it's okay to sure he gets longer now. <laughs> but that's my time. I'm Josh Edwards. Thank you so much, Josh.